Hey everyone, welcome to Woolen Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. Thank you so much for being here. It is Saturday, January 23rd, 2021, and we are together. We are streaming every Saturday morning and I just want to welcome you to this place. Thank you so much. If you are a new viewer and you're just checking out the show for the first time, thank you so much for being here and for giving this show a try. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you for continuing to watch and for checking in here week after week. Please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and I would really appreciate that. And you might want to turn on notifications so that on Tuesday afternoons when the show goes public, you know that a show is available. And of course, to our Patreon community, thank you so much for being here. You guys are what keeps the lights on week after week, and I, I couldn't do any of this without you. So thank you so much. Um, if you're curious about learning more about the Patreon community, you can go to well, patreon.com slash wellforpearls, or just go to wellforpearls.com and have a look at the blog and some of the things that are on the sidebar to just kind of give you an idea of sort of what we do here and a little bit about myself. How are you guys? Um, Kelly was mentioning that uh, she's in Edmonton in Northern Alberta and uh, she was saying about the polar vortex that is, has that settled in on uh, Northern Canada. Um, we are uh, expecting it tomorrow night. So uh, it feels very like dramatic. There's like Arctic vortex, but we've had frost the last few uh, mornings. And I have to say as much as I love um, that we don't have to wear and worry about really, really super cold weather and super warm clothing and whatnot to have the kids outside. I have to admit, when we get these icy kind of weather systems from the north, I actually really like them because not only is it woolen season anyways, because it's damp here, so we I wear a lot of woolens anyways, there's sun. We get the sun. So like, you know, we get a break from that really gray rain that we get here in Vancouver. And anybody who's lived here in the south, um, the southwest coast of British Columbia, uh, if you've ever kind of known this area, or basically all of the Pacific Northwest, let's be honest. So Oregon all the way up to and including parts of northern British Columbia, um, we get a lot of gray and a lot of rain. And many of us don't mind. That's why we stay here. Uh, but it is nice to have a break and have that colder weather and get the sun, right? The sun. So. Oh, thank you, Eve. She said, I look nice today. I'm always wearing makeup when I do the live stream, but that's really kind. Thank you. I feel very well rested. Maybe that's what it is. When I chatted with Eve yesterday, I, I felt really tired. Um, so maybe that's what it is. I feel a lot better. And uh, thank you, Eve, for our chat yesterday. Um, I'm going to share a little bit about Eve um, just for a second. She, uh, I've done this too. So her and I were commiserating. Um, I was uh, offering her moral support more than anything uh, because she had cut off her gorgeous hands spun scarf that's a gift for her mom so hand spun warp hand spun weft maybe she'll put into the chat um, um, what the fibers were because honestly it is beautiful anyway she cut it off without hem stitching the top so I was offering her moral support and just sitting with her while she did that didn't take very long um, I think she thought it would take longer than it did to fix it but she ended up having to hem stitch it off the loom which if you've ever done is really annoying uh, it's happened to me a couple of times so yeah um, oh, that's wonderful, Rebecca. So they are the beneficiary beneficiaries of the quote Arctic vortex because it's only it's supposed to get up to minus twenty over the next few days, and they're going to the cabin, which is awesome. They go out to the um, so Rebecca is in uh, Nunavut, and she uh, up in up in northern Canada, one of our territories, and uh, in Rankin Inlet, and they uh, take the I think you guys do you go on skidoos um, out to the cabin uh, just to kind of get away from the city. So. Canadian weather. It's so sunny. It must be really cold. Totally. That's totally Canadian weather. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Rebecca. Um, hello to Diana. She's in sunny Glen Valley, which is just in northern Langley. So she's about 17 kilometers from me. Uh, it's about a 20 minute drive. And the only reason why I know that is because the very first time that I went out to Diana's house, um, I used Google Maps and it said 17 kilometers to your destination because we measure. It's funny because when we chat with Eve, who's in the UK, many people in other parts of the world measure distance by things like kilometers, miles. And in North America, we often measure distance by time. So how long is it going to take you to get there? That's how far it is. Um, so like I am 35 minutes from downtown Vancouver. So that's how far it is. It's 35 minutes away. <laughs> so my, my dad, who immigrated here from, from England, 
when he first came to Canada, it was a real mind bender for him. He was like, well, like, how far is that? And it's like, well, 35 minutes. Yeah, but how far is it? Well, it's 35 minutes. <laughs> so um, you can see how, uh, because we drive such huge distances in North America compared to other parts of the world, uh, particularly when you compare that to Europe, um, it makes more sense to measure it in distance than it does, uh, sorry, in time than it does in distance to say it's 17 kilometers away or it's 45 kilometers away. Well, who cares? How long is it going to take you? So, yeah. Yeah, we totally do, Kelly. That's right. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Eve. Lots of swearing was involved. Although you had a pretty good, um, you had a pretty good attitude about it yesterday. Um, yesterday afternoon, it was your afternoon, my morning. Um, Rebecca says yes, they do go by skidoo uh, four wheeler in the summer and the fall. That's right. I couldn't remember if it was an ATV that you do all year round or if it was just um, the skidoos in the winter. So Sharon is ripping out a shawl that she never liked, um, that she's made with hand spun and she will make it into something that she will likely use. That's awesome, Sharon. Good for you. Re, I, I think of it, you guys are going to laugh at me. I think of it as like repatriating the yarn. So in critical care, uh, when ICU and CSICU and CCU, all these different use all these different units um, get full we try to repatriate people to where they came from so we often in our ICU end up with people from other parts of the province because we take a lot of the trauma and we take all of the uh, traumatic brain injuries so or the majority of them so anybody needing surgery so, um, so we we often will repatriate people so I often I know this is so funny but I I often think of it as repatriating the yarn <laughs> You're repatriating the yarn to something and somewhere else. Um, I, I always think that in my head. This one, the Marmore, which we'll talk about today. I repatriated the yarn from another sweater. <laughs> um, I don't think I've ever shared that with you guys before, but I always think that. Um, so welcome, everybody. Uh, my hair is falling out, so I'm just going to take my clip out. And uh, let's get into the show. So I could probably sit here and wax poetic with you guys all morning because that's kind of just... That's what Saturday mornings are for, it's to spend time together. But what we will be talking about today is uh, some reflections about my Romney spin. And I was actually hoping, oh, Jess, it's so good to see you. Jess is in the chat today. Um, it's so good to see you and have you here. Um, I was actually hoping that Jenny would be here, but I don't see her yet. So maybe she'll be watching later. Um, I'm going to be talking about my Romney bat spin that I've been working on uh, for my mom's sweater. So my job today is to knit a swatch of that sweater so that I can show it to her tomorrow and get her feedback on it. Uh, we will be talking about my marmor, which I am wearing, and we will be talking about a weaving project that's going on to the loom, hopefully today, and we will talk about braiding color study because that is going live on Monday. So I will field questions from you guys about that. Um, uh, later in the show. And then lastly, we'll have community participation. So without further ado, let's get into the show and let's talk about, um, Let's talk about Romney. So I was trying to figure out what the best way to set up the cameras is, but I think what we'll do is, uh, I love that quote um, that just went by. So Zan was saying the old saying in America, I think you should say in North America, because it's the same in Canada. In North America, they think that 100 years is a long time. In Europe, they think 100 miles is a long time, uh, is a long, hang on, my chat just went, went by. Um, in Europe, they think 100 miles is a long way. <laughs> it's so true. Um, all right, so let's talk about this Romney. Uh, did I showed you guys, maybe you guys can let me know. Uh, maybe I, did I show you the true size of this bat that I've got that I, that it was given to me by um, my friend Lori of Disdero Ranch? Did I show you guys the actual size? I know I talked about it, but I, did I actually show it to you? Um, because what I have been, 
been doing with it is I've been just like ripping it off. Um, so it was carded at a local mill um, here in here in Kamloops, British Columbia. And the fiber um, has been coming off sort of a little bit... Um, it it's it's very farmy let's just put it that way it's not a bad thing um there's nothing wrong with it it's it's not it's not poorly poorly prepped it's very clean um it's quite it's it's not bad um i i you know it it's it's not bad there's there's some um, some things about it that uh you know like there's some naps and there's some um like where the tips caught in the carter and there is a little bit of vm in places but like overall it's clean it's just quite long stapled like the romney is is you know it's it's got a nice staple to it so this is part of the bat it's not all of it but this is some of it so what i've been doing is i've been actually just ripping chunks off um, like this. So there's kind of this chunk, this ear piece off to the side. And, um, what I've been doing from there, and I was telling these guys in the wool circle yesterday morning, which is the other live stream that we do. Um, what I've been doing is I've just been gently pre attenuating or pre drafting it. And I've been adding a little bit of a twist. That was a trick that I got from my friend, Kim McKenna, um, to just give it a little bit of a twist to keep the fibers really um, nicely organized. You know, if you're gonna go to all this trouble of organizing your prep and doing your prep, or especially if you're doing it from fleece and you're doing all that time, uh, you know, like spend the time to keep your prep organized. So uh, adding a little teeny tiny bit of a twist really, really helps with that. So there's this stuff in there, um, which is, you know, from a big, big fleece like this is probably to be expected. Um, so it's like stuff like that. So as I've been spinning, I've, I've had to pause a, a few times to pull stuff like that out. I don't mind. Um, it's, uh, you know, to me is like, you know, a, a big bat like this. I don't know how many pounds it is. Um, it's probably a couple of pounds at least of spinning fiber. Um, I don't mind if there's a little bit of waste that comes off of it. Oh, welcome, Michelle. Uh, just started spinning her advent in, uh, in, uh, um, in various breeds. That's wonderful. Um, I like that way of describing it. It's farmy. Yeah, it's just farmy. <laughs> it's rustic. Um, yeah, exactly, Diane. So yeah, because it, it's not, I think sometimes we think when we say certain things about certain preps or certain fibers or certain things that we have in our stash, like sometimes I think afterwards when I'm like explaining something to you guys, and I'm watching the live stream later to add all the timestamps and whatnot, I think, oh, I wonder if, um, if it sounded like negative, but like nine times out of 10, I don't mean it negatively. It's just a way of trying to describe things and trying to um, articulate things to you guys so that you understand kind of, you know, what it is that I'm doing. Cause sometimes I think it's hard to sort of translate that across video. Um, so that's what I've been doing. And, and, you know, so I started off with that chunk. And if you're watching this later, you can go back and have a look at what I started with. And then you can have a look at what I've sort of ended up with by just sitting here and chit chatting with you guys and just pre attenuating all of this and drafting it out and adding a bit of a bit of a twist every time. I can I can keep going with this like I honestly I've had to kind of stop myself when I do this work um, from not going over it and over and over and over it again and again and again because honestly I could just sit here and do this all day. Um, so then what I've been doing is just very, very gently wrapping, wrapping the fibers into sort of a cloud. Um, sorry, the camera keeps going back and forth because it sees my face, but then it disappears because of the, 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 the Romney that is the cloud in front of me. So that is how it ends up. Like, isn't that incredible? That's an incredible, um, uh, transformation. So uh, that is what I've been spinning. And I've been doing this on my e-spinner. I have some video to share with you guys if you want to see it. Uh, we did do this last time round, but let's have a look. So I've been spinning this short forward and um, I don't spin short forward very often. No, you can't really over attenuate unless it starts to fall apart. Uh, great question, Eve. So if you're, if you're attenuating and attenuating and attenuating, you're pulling it and pulling it and pulling it and pulling it. Um, eventually it's just going to fall apart. So you do kind of have to be aware, um, of, you know, pre attenuating it to the point where you're breaking your staple. Um, 
I just want to make sure that I'm not missing something. You guys are super, super chatty. Uh, a couple pound bat. Okay, so uh, let me show you some photos afterwards um, of this bat, Megan. But I guess I didn't share, I didn't show you guys what this uh, looks like. Um, I shall use the farmy word when I next wash fleece in the house. Hubby won't doesn't like the smell. That's awesome, Samantha. I haven't sent you the um, protractor cards yet, Samantha, but I will this week. I have a couple of things I need to get in the mail, so I, you're on my list. Uh, so are you, Debbie. Um, I need to. I haven't sent you your stitch markers yet, but thank you both of you for your addresses. Um, I love a farmy rustic prep. Those are my favorite spins. Oh my gosh, Jess, that's like you, you farmy rustic and Jess are like simpatico. So this is this this part of the bat I pulled off just for something to work with. But I'll sh I think I showed this on the wool stream. I think that's why um, I keep thinking that I showed it to you guys, but I didn't. So let me while you guys are watching me spin, I'll unfold this thing. So this is the rest of the bat, okay? This is the other part that I haven't been working with. So this is it. Let me see if I can pull it apart. I, I have to be really careful because it'll like damage the integrity of the bat. So this, this it's taller than me. So it's on the floor. Um, and you can see where I've ripped off that chunk right here. I ripped this chunk off. So if I hold it out, <laughs> so it came to me from Lori, sort of like this, like wrapped up like that. So it was deceptive. So when I opened it up, um, I knew it, I, I knew it was big. Um, but I didn't realize it was that big. So when I opened it up, um, I had a, I'll show you guys a photo in just a sec, but I, it was tied really beautifully by the mill. And when I, un, when I, when I pulled the string, it just went poof. <laughs> so it was pretty intense. And then, and then there's the question of like, holy moly, like, what do you, how am I going to spin this thing? Like, this is like meant to go on to an, like the, it came off of an industrial carter, not a pin drafter. And then it's not really for hand spinning, not really. It probably was sort of more meant to like go to yarn next, like like be in a mill, that mill probably, because uh, Lori has a lot of yarn made from her um, fibers. And so, and then she also sells some fiber for spinning. So there's kind of this combination of both that she does. This is Disdero Ranch, uh, disderoranch.ca. And, um, her rovings are amazing, just like Twin Oaks Farm in Ontario, just like uh, Lynn does sometimes for West Coast Color. And um, this bat was probably meant for um, uh, making yarn in the mill. It wasn't really meant for a hand spinner. So then that's why I have to go back and sort of rip pieces off and pre-attenuate. Let me just catch up on chat. Oh, good Eve, her markers arrived. Skip the spinning and just use it as a blanket. Absolutely, Caitlin. Uh, looks like the strip strip of a hide. Oh my goodness, Diana, totally. Um, fold that sucker and have a super luxurious blankie. Totally, yeah, absolutely, Zen. It's huge, yeah, it's huge. Uh, would people use it for bedding or quilting? You know what, Greta, that's a great question. And actually, I was wondering if that was the case, if that was actually maybe it was meant for uh, bedding um, or quilting, like it was actually like a bat um, for like batting, but Lori pretty much only does hand spinners and knitting yarns, uh, hand spinners, fleeces and knitting yarns. So everything that she does, she, it's a no kill farm and she does, um, multi-generational flocks. So she's got Romney, CVM, crosses, mohair goats. Um, what else does she have? Those are kind of the main ones. And she, uh, does a lot of like her goal is, is to sell fiber and, and yarn. Uh, Jess has actually worked with her yarns a lot and worked with her fibers a lot. So has Mari for those who know, uh, Mari in our community. And, um, so these fibers are sort of, um, you know, these bats and stuff. I'm, I'm sure that this bat was probably destined for yarn and Lori just ended up taking it home. Um, so yeah, it's wild. You're right, Sarah. It's totally wild. 
<laughs> so it has been in my stash embarrassingly since about 2016 and I found it accidentally when I was airing out my stash um, the, over the Christmas holiday. I was looking for some fiber that was enough volume to make my mom a gentle morning, uh, which is a very well-known sweater that we, many of us in our community has made and I'm gonna make a second one because my mom really wants one. So let's talk about the yarn. Uh, so I took off a sample off of the, um, I'm spinning this on my Ashford E spinner. Um, I'm doing uh, quite, um, as you saw in the video, quite uh, sort of moderate to low twist singles. Um, I don't want anything really high twist. Romney's very long stapled. It doesn't need a ton of twist. So you can see when it came off of the E spinner, I was really watching my, my twist angle. And if we want, if you want to talk about this some more and you want to know about this some more, uh, the wool circle yesterday, this is what we talked about for, um, pretty much the 45 minutes that we were together. So I was plying to a certain angle and uh, this is what the yarn looked like when it came off of the e-spinner. So it's quite crinkly, quite twisted up on itself. I think it twisted, the skein twisted on itself about four or five times. Um, and actually Jenny and I had been talking about that, which is why I was hoping that she'd be in the chat so that um, she could see that. Um, and I will show you guys what the bat looked like. So I'll add those photos here as well. And um, I washed the yarn uh, yesterday. I so this was my two ply ply back ply my two plies blah, 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 my two ply sample that I had made um, when I was uh, just playing around. And it's way too high twist, and it's actually a little tiny bit ropey. The twist angle is too high. I'm sorry that the the lights are a bit harsh today. I'm not really sure why they're so harsh. Actually, to be honest, I think it's just the light outside. Um, and, uh, the twist angle is too high. It feels ropey. It's got a halo, but it's not soft like I wanted it to be. <clears throat> so, um, I was going for a much gentler three ply. So post, so that's what the yarn looked like pre-washing. And this is the yarn post-washing. So much more, uh, relaxed. It's balanced. Um, it's hanging in a lovely loop. It's still a teeny, teeny, tiny bit damp. I think it's like 95% dry. Um, and I'll put on the big camera so you can really see. This is this is the finished yarn. So much, much gentler twist angle. Um, it's got a it's got a really nice halo to it. It totally transformed the yarn. I have to admit, when it came off yesterday, I was sort of feeling like, hmm, not sure I like this. But um when it came after it was washed and finished, I have to admit, I, I was really, really, really happy with, with what, what the finished yarn looked like. So, um, I was going for 12 wraps per inch and where did my, my wraps per inch card here. And I think it's more like 14. So yeah, it's sort of in the 12 to 14 range. Unfortunately, it's not quite as thick as I wanted it to be. So if it was really what I wanted it to be, it would be down here where, but it's sort of more like 14. So I'll knit up, I'll, I'll knit up my, um, my swatch. The Romney being a little bit, uh, a little bit toothier, a little bit farmier. Um, it might actually do quite well knit at four millimeters. And, um, with that textured, uh, it's got gentle morning has broken rib in it. So it might actually do quite well. Um, knit on four millimeter needles. We'll, we'll see. I will report back, obviously. I always report back. So that is my big project uh, that I am working on right now. Will the halo obscure the broken rib? It might a little bit. Um, that's actually why I want to do a uh, really, uh, like do a, a sample swatch, uh, do a, a knitted swatch, because A, I want to show my mom, because I'm not sure that it's going to be what she, um, what she'll like. And B, um, it'll give me an idea of sort of how the yarn will drape in the sweater. And then third, um, it'll give me an idea of sort of where we go from here, if that's not what she wants and what she likes. And I think what we will end up doing if she says no, I'm like 70% sure she's going to say no. Um, I'm going to do some sampling with some finish, finish top that I have, fin that I have, that's a little bit darker brown. And I'm going to show that to her and show her the contrast and say like, what do you want to do? And if she says that she doesn't know if she would wear it and she doesn't know if it's really what she wants and she doesn't know and da, 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 um, 
I might just offer to uh, do something else for her. Maybe, maybe um, she doesn't really wear shawls, but maybe like a really nice toque with some color work in it, um, like something else and just kind of um, encourage her to go in a different direction. Um, I think I would enjoy a prep like that. Mars, I can just see you like up to your like knees in like Romney, like in the bat and like in that, just ripping it apart and like attenuating it. And just like with this big smile on your face with a cup of tea, like I can just see you, <laughs> uh, Greta too. Like there's just a few of you that like, I know what you guys like to do and like to spin and I can just see you just, and then, and then the dying, like the, the other side of it, like Kelly doing her, her natural dyes and harvesting stuff out of her garden. Um, I can just see you guys like the wheels turning around, like what you would do for a natural dyeing and what it would look like over top of the natural oatmeal -y brown Romney. And like, I can just see like, you're like little children in a playground and we would all be in there together in the sandbox. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> all of us. Um, what was the twist angle before and after washing? Great question, Barbel. Um, so the twist angle prior to washing, um, and I was, uh, um, I talked about it a lot yesterday on the wool circle, so I won't go into a huge amount of detail, but basically, um, the twist angle prior was 30 degrees. So when I did my three ply ply back test, it was 30 degrees. And then when I went to ply it, I went for a slightly stiffer twist angle. Um, so more like 40 degrees so that in the washing, it would relax down to 30 degrees. Does that make sense? Does that help? Uh, yes, Karen, it is deja vu because we watched it last week. Um, that's why I didn't really talk about the spinning or like what I was actually doing for the draft because we talked about it last week. Um, but I wanted to refresh people's memory while I showed you guys the bat. I've never worked from a bat. There is so much out there in the world of spinning that I don't even know where to start. Oh my gosh, Caitlin, totally. I felt that same way. And I remember sitting down with Diana, who's in the chat right now. I remember sitting down with her and going like, I don't even know where to start because I was coming back to spinning after a break and things had changed so much. Um, and it was great to have somebody to kind of guide me. Uh, so is this gain a two ply or three ply? Great question, Charlotte. Um, it's a three ply. So the sweater yarn itself, when it's finished, will be a three ply. The sample that I did, the bracelet ply that was hard spun and wiry, and that was two ply. And I didn't like it. Um, I like the sweater you're wearing kind of rustic. I imagine you're going out to the sheep barn. Totally. Uh, Karen, we're going to talk about this next. So that is a great, great... Um, Segway, sheep box. Oh my gosh, instead of the sandbox, Megan, the sheep box. I love it. So this is Marmor. Um, let me just get rid of the product camera. So this is Marmor. It is a pattern by um, Regina Mosimo. I don't really know how to say her last name, but Ma Um Marmor, M-A-R-M-O-R. This was the sweater that I had ripped out and I had um, taken out a lot of the bulk and a lot of the extra stitches that you add under the arm and across the front uh, for the collar as you work the body. And I had basically like run out of yarn or was going to run out of yarn, but also was quite concerned about the degree of positive ease that was in it. So there are a few things that I want to say about this sweater. And I'm not sure if the best thing to do would actually be to maybe put it on my dress form. What do you guys think? And I can chat to it while um, onto my onto my dress onto my dress form. But basically this is a contiguous construction. So I am going to turn around so that you guys can see the back and then you guys can decide if you want me to put it on uh, my dress form or not to talk to it. So if you look at the back, uh, you cast on here at the back neck and you work your way across the back collar and then you start to pick up for the top of the back yoke of the sweater and then you build out to the back. So, um, the yes, dress form. Okay, you guys, that is so helpful. Thank you so much. So sometimes I don't know. Um, so, and actually I'm getting warm, so it's probably a good thing uh, to take it off. So let me move my dress form up and uh, we'll talk to this. Look at that. She's all ready to go. She wants to be front and center for a couple minutes. Isn't that fantastic? So... I have been wearing this a ton um, and part of the reason is because it's actually very wearable and it's very easy to wear but there are a few things about it that I don't love um, so let me just tell you about the construction first and then we'll go from there 
So if the sleeve caps are in the right spot, um, if they're in the right spot, keyword if, um, if they're in the right spot, the sleeve caps are right here, okay? And I know it's hard to see because we're on camera and we're not in real life, but if we were in a class together and you guys could come up and actually see this, this is the sleeve cap. Now you can see that there's kind of all of this extra bulk up here in the sweater itself. There's all of this kind of bulk back here and bulk up here. So what ends up happening is it falls down um, and then the sleeve cap is sort of down um, like around my bicep versus up on my deltoid, um, which for those who sort of have some anatomy sort of know. Um, and the thing is, is that the shawl collar um, sort of naturally kind of folds back uh, to create this really lovely shape back here and you in the modeled photos like she's got it kind of just bunched up around her neck and I like both my Solaris is very similar in construction and it's the same like it kind of just like sits there but because it's a band I think it actually works a bit better now with this one you cast on up here at the very top back and you can see how all of this here this is all supposed to be down on your back neck uh, sorry, not on your back neck, but like on your back between your scapula, but instead it's up on your back neck. So you cast on up here. If you're not following and you're not a sweater knitter or you haven't done this type of construction, just listen and then later go back and rewatch and sort of try to uh, follow along kind of um, uh, down the road, like you know, uh, rewatch it or re-listen to it um, because it will make sense once I explain the whole thing, okay? Um, so you cast on up here, you knit out, and then you come back and you knit out. And then you, um, from there, you pick up stitches across here and you start to increase out across the, the top of your shoulders, which is a really nice way of doing the contiguous construction because once you've done that, then you start to build the sleeve cap. So you've kind of got this area where you're increasing and then once you get to a certain point, you start to increase into your sleeve cap. So it's actually really, really brilliant. I really enjoyed it. See, it just falls right away. Um, so I really enjoyed that. I thought that that worked really well. I really liked the construction. I really liked um, working it. It was really fast. I felt like I was making really quick um, progress on it really quickly. I will say I was knitting the smallest size, but to be honest with you, if there was one size smaller, I would have made that one. Not because I'm that small, but because this is has a huge amount of positive ease built into it. So um, the sweater itself just is big anyways, and I think I would have preferred a slightly more fitted um, shoulder and yoke area, and then I would have compensated by increasing in the body. Does that make sense? So um, it, it sort of always feels when I'm wearing it, like I'm pulling at it, like I'm pulling it back up my, up my shoulder. Um, and you can see how when the sleeve caps are in the right spot, you've got all of this extra fabric at the back and you can't compensate for that. Like you can't, there's no way to wear that. Um, you, you, you can't, it's not like in the front of a sweater where you can pull it across or you can pull it forward. You can't get rid of that. So there's about, do I have a ruler? Yeah, so there's about four inches of ease back here that needs to be taken out to fit me really perfectly. Um, and if that ease wasn't in there, then the, the collar would fold over properly and be in the right spot right? See how it would be in the right spot and your shoulders, you wouldn't be pulling at your shoulders all the time. So it sounds like I've got nothing but negative things to say about this sweater. And that's not the case at all. I actually love this. I, I don't love it. I like this sweater. I've worn it a ton. I'll, I'll answer you guys' questions, um, in just a second. Um, uh, in the chat, cause I know you guys are asking some questions, but, um, what I would do if I were making it again, knowing what I know now, um, as I'm trying it on and as I'm building that sleeve cap, um, I would decide whether or not I needed to go back and take out some of this, some of this bulk in the back. So from shoulder uh, girdle, which is this right here at the back of your shoulder. If you have somebody, your best friend, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your partner, your spouse, 
um, a child that's old enough that can do an accurate measurement. Um, I think Nora at age six, I think if I guided her, I think she could do it. If you can get your measurement from, from shoulder to shoulder, so from your shoulder blade, not your shoulder blade, but your actual shoulder girdle, this thing right here, if you can get an accurate measurement across there so that you know exactly how many stitches you need to have across there before you start increasing for your, um, for your um, sleeve caps, this would fit perfectly. Um, and you figure that out by figuring out how many inches this is on you. Uh, and then you, and then you kind of work backwards. So if it's 18 inches and your gauge is four stitches per inch, then four times 18, that's the number of stitches that you need across the back here. Does that make sense? I'll answer, I'll answer lots of questions. There are no short rows. Um, there are no short rows involved. Isn't that incredible? No short rows. Um, it's all done by strategic increases. So increasing across the top of the shoulder and then increasing around the sleeve cap. From that perspective alone, this sweater is awesome. Like from a construction perspective, this is genius. It just has a lot of positive ease built in and I just don't have a big back. Um, if you have a really big back, this would be a great sweater for you. If you have big bust, it might... It depends because even if you have a big bust and you're pulling it across the front of you, you would still have that slouching. Like if you don't have shoulders, like my, as much as I was a swimmer and I had really big traps and I had really big shoulders and I always have had a little bit of shoulder definition just from my residual swimming days. I'm, I don't have those big, big, big shoulders and big traps anymore like I used to. And so I don't, like stuff does fall off of me. I also don't have a very big bust. I'm an A cup. And so everything kind of just falls off of me. There is some advantages to having that lovely, that really gorgeous, curvy hourglass Marilyn Monroe kind of look. Um, because these sweaters, the, a sweater like this would just, that would be a perfect sweater for you. So let me answer questions. Uh, Jennifer, I think somebody answered your question about the pattern name. It's Marmore by, um, uh, Regina Mosmer and it, it Mos, Mo, Moesmer. It's in the show notes, uh, patreon.com slash welfare pearls. Um, you'd need like a pleat in the back. That's exactly it, Rebecca. There's like, I need like a pleat. Um, would you remake it or just live with it? So I have already remade this once um, because, uh, so great question, Karen, because I got to the bottom. So I added length to the bottom of the um, sweater to make it longer. And I was running out of yarn. So I repatriated this yarn from the fireside pullover because I just, it was too big. I never wore it. My body shape had changed post, uh, post children. It was too big, uh, across the yoke, uh, same problem, too much ease for me. And, um, I need, I would have needed to knit, um, a smaller size if I were going to re-knit this. And so what I did was I repatriated the yarn. I washed it and then um, I was running out of yarn again. So I made the sleeves a little bit shorter. They're only 16 inches versus 19 inches. So I normally make my sleeves 19 inches. So they're more like a uh, bracelet length, which actually works really well with a lot of the shirts and sweaters or not sweaters, sh shirts and t-shirts that I wear. Um, because then you have the sleeve poking out underneath and you can kind of fold it back or just push it up and then your sleeves aren't um dripping and everything because yesterday i put on my gentle morning and my sleep and i was doing the dishes and the sleeves were getting into the dishwasher and i had to push them up um so i pro i wouldn't remake it now the other thing that i did uh while we're talking about that is so let me move my stool sorry i took out a lot of the ease in the front of the sweater so you can see that even though i took out a lot of the ease it still comes across midline if I were to go back and remake this again, I would leave the increases that are worked in the front collar right after you divide for the sleeves. I took those out when I remade it. I would put those back in. Um, you just need that shape of the shawl coming across and I took those out. So that's the one thing that I would, that I would do. The other thing that I would do um, is uh, make sure that I had enough yarn. <laughs> This ended up taking more yarn than I thought that it would. So even though it's garter, I find garter stitch eats up yarn. Um, I, I knew that I had enough yarn per the pattern because of knitting a sweater with this yarn previously, but I only had what I had because it was yarn that I had spun back in 2014. 
This is from Semiamu, Semiahu suffix. Um, this is a meat merino suffix cross. It was very toothy, very farmy. Um, I dyed it in black walnut. And uh, it's sort of, it's something that you would want for outerwear. This is gonna be a really great sweater for when we go camping, to be honest, because it's super warm. Um, and then because it's garter and because garter eats up yarn, you've got these eye cords that you work in four different places in the sweater. And the reason for that is to keep the garter shape, is to hold the garter shape. So you've got the, the eye cord that goes around the front, eye cord under the arm, same with the sleeves. And then you've got it in the back as well. Um, and then under the other arm, obviously. So you've got all of this guard, um, um, You've got all this gorgeous eye cord to sort of hold everything in place. So you can see when I take out the uh, the pleat in the back that we put on, you see how immediately the it falls, the uh, sleeve cap. So the other thing that I could do, I just thought of this actually, for those who are who are real uh, sweater connoisseurs as well, um, you could actually because the sweater shaping, the sleeve shaping starts up here, and it and it sorry the shoulder shaping starts up here and it finishes about here. You guys can probably see the texture difference on the camera there. You could actually weave uh, a piece of yarn straight down there and then cinch it up. You could do that. Actually, you could cinch it up so that it would create like a little bit of a, um, like a gathering and that would bring it up onto your shoulder. You could totally do that if, if uh, you cared to. Uh, we're... The yarn estimates off, not in the pattern. My own estimates were off. Um, how much I thought I had and how much I actually needed were different. So yeah, the pattern the pattern was awesome. I would knit this again. I would knit her patterns again. The pattern was awesome. It was beautifully laid out. It was beautifully constructed and written. It was very similar to what you can expect when you download Anka's Tricks patterns. Um, Anka's patterns are always like just rock solid. This was just exactly like that. I knew exactly like when I downloaded it, paid the money, got the pattern, printed it off because I don't normally print them, but I did for this because it was the contiguous construction. Um, it was just detailed stitch counts were perfect instructions were perfect i knew exactly what she wanted me to do it was rock solid um is there a way to substitute a drop shoulder instead of a contiguous you know what to be honest with you it would have been better for me with this sweater shape with the amount of ease that ended up being in it to do a raglan Yeah, Kelly, I must admit, I love when a dye job mimics the natural wool color. So this was actually over dyed, black walnut over dyed on gray. Uh, my mother-in-law was here at the time and she wanted to see what natural dyeing looked like, like how to do it. And um, I think she was just curious. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I did a sort of a dye experiment for her. I immediately regretted it because I loved the gray so much, but um, the sheep will grow more wool. The eye cord is lovely, absolutely, and it's a great way to add structure. Absolutely, Diana, and I think that's actually the only reason why I'm not ripping it out is because the eye cord helps to maintain its structure. If there was no eye cord, that sleeve problem would just be a nightmare. Um, so I think that that was uh, the one the one good thing about this sweater. So if you guys are happy to move on, let's move on to our breeding color study. So let me just move Diane back with Diana backwards. I'm happy to answer any more questions about, about uh, the sweater that you might have. So please don't hesitate to ask. And um, you can always leave a comment and ask in the comment section as well. I did lengthen it. Um, I put about two extra inches on it. So I think the finished sweater in the pattern is, I feel like it's 15 inches finished. And I think mine is more like 17 finished. I matched the length of my Solaris. Um, I was doing a lot of matching back and forth. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the, those are the big reflections. So for those who, um, are sort of lost about the, um, about the construction discussion and are sort of haven't gone there yet with sweater construction, this is not a great pattern for a first time knitter first time sweater knitter, maybe having to make some adjustments. Um, this would not be a great pattern for you. However, if you're an intermediate knitter, uh, sweater knitter, you've done sweaters in the past, you'd really like to delve into contiguous construction, you're curious about it, 
this would be an awesome pattern because um, if the sizes are your sizes and you don't need anything smaller or bigger, um, you would you would end up with a really great sweater at the end and you would learn how to do contiguous construction. So I would I would I still would recommend the pattern. Yeah. If we're happy to talk. Yeah. <laughs> I know, Diane. I know. <laughs> Definitely going into my Ravelry queue. Definitely something for hand spun. Absolutely, Deborah. Absolutely. Um, so, um, oh, Sarah's laughing at me too. You guys are so funny. So let me just grab some water to to wet my whistle. Mm. Greta. Um, sorry, I'm crunching on ice now. Greta, if you are still in the chat, uh, the warmest row. Um, um, that, that Greta, um, your sweater that you made, I knew you would be here today. And I was like, I could tag her in Slack, but she's probably going to be here. So I want to ask her, um, you out of yarn and texture, this brilliant book by, uh, Jillian Moreno. Love this book. I had somebody ask me if they were, Oh, take care. Um, Mars, good to see you in here. Steak surgery in the back. No, San, I don't think so. I thought about it, to be honest. Um, I think I would actually rather um, rip it out, to be honest, um, and re-knit it. But you can't, I knit the smallest size, so there's nowhere to go. Like, I can't go, you know. Um, yeah, this is a great book. I had somebody ask me if, if I think it was my, I think it was Jenny actually who asked if I was going to only buy one book and I already had the fleece and fiber source book and I could only buy one more book for spinning and it was like a catch all. What would I buy? If I couldn't buy anything else and I could only buy one book, this is the book that I would buy. Uh, so Greta, um, <laughs> she said, yes, um, you knit this sweater, I think the pullover that's in here. So this is a uh, thick and thin plied yarn. It was a two ply in the book. Um, and it was done. It was a slub yarn. Um, I was just wondering if you still wear that sweater. Um, and if you do, uh, this is the, the fabric that is created from that sweater. So you make a, that you make this yarn and, uh, this gorgeous thick and thin two ply coiled yarn. I think she calls it, um, it's a, a core ply yarn. I think that's what she calls it. And I was just actually wondering um, what you used for, for fiber for it um, to make sure that it's called the Dye Goddess Pullover. Um, I was, it's a pattern by Jillian Moreno herself. I was just wondering what you used for fiber. What was their fiber that you used for it? Because I'm worried that the, um, I'm worried that the, the thick and thin uh, cause in here they, it's Merino that's used Merino. And then for the core yarn, they use a Merino silk that she spun. That was, um, um, the core yarn. And I was actually just, I, the Merino, those, those thick and thin bits that it's going to pill just something terrible. So I was just wondering what you used. Um, I would love to hear here and, and any other reflections about that sweater. So you did use, oh, you used Rambo for the slub ply. Okay. And then a uh, silk and merino for the core. Okay. So you pretty much followed, um, followed the, the pattern then in the book. Uh, how would you measure gauge with a yarn like that? You have to knit with it and then you have to, um, take into account the fact that you've got a whole bunch of, um, um, so if you look at the, the fabric there, because you've got all of those thick and thin bits, you have to just take that into account and count your stitches across the four inches. Um, it's just part, you just sort of have to take it into, into account that your, your, your gauge swatch isn't going to be absolutely perfect. All right. Breed and color. I've made you guys wait long enough. Okay. So breed and color. Let's talk about, uh, so for January's, um, giveaway, if um, we are doing a giveaway that is actually from Liz of Kingdom Fleece and Fiberworks. We're doing a fin and silk giveaway. Um, this is Bullseye. It's a gourd. I've, I'm actually using this uh, fiber for my natural shades along, uh, which we also talked about yesterday. So um, this is a fin and silk pin drafted roving. It's just absolutely beautifully prepped by Liz of Kingdom. And um, 
there's four ounces here. So if you want to comment either in the Ravelry group, in the episode thread, or here on YouTube, not in the live chat, but actually in YouTube itself, um, on in the comments, and just tell us what you're working on for January, and I will do the draw at the beginning of February for that, and I will ship it anywhere in the world. If you have a shipping address, I will send it to you. Um, oh, that's great, Greta. So it didn't pill, needs a lot of twist, and it was a crazy fun spin. Thanks, Greta. That's awesome. So tell us about your most recent spin for the giveaway and then breeding color study. So if you guys have any questions about breeding color study, now is the time to ask them, throw them into the chat now, and I will answer them as we go. So breeding color study uh, started back on at the beginning of January, we are looking at Shetland this time round. If you have not, if you're a patron of the community and you have not listened to the Woolen Spinning Radio episode that uh, I released last Friday, so just over a week ago, please have a listen uh, for me and Katrina waxing poetic and giving you the details about uh, this study. Katrina talks about her inspiration and how this this colorway came to be and she also talks about the ordering. Um, now we will start ordering on Monday morning at 9 a.m. to participate in our breed and color studies. You do not, I repeat, you do not need to order fiber. This is only for people who would like to order and would like to participate with the colorway and the fiber that um, I am working with and others in the community are working with. So if this, if if you don't want to buy anything and you want to shop from your stash or you want to source it from elsewhere, absolutely. Um, there is no, just because you don't order fiber from, from Katrina does not mean you can't participate. Uh, so I hope that's clear as mud. The uh, post went live yesterday as well as in Katrina's newsletter with the password that you will need at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Monday morning. Uh, to get into the ordering. So you do not need to have a discount code. You do not need to plug anything in when you're hitting, when you hit the checkout, but you do need a word that is case sensitive to get into the website. Okay. I hope that's clear. So you, that word is supplied to you in the Patreon post and also in Katrina's newsletter. Um, so the post is here. You need to memorize that word. It is case sensitive. And when you click the ordering link, it will ask you for a password at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and you just punch it in and then you can go ahead with your ordering and do whatever you want to do. The discount will be applied automatically at checkout for you within that first hour of ordering. After that, the link goes public. Everybody is invited to participate and um, the the disc there will there won't be a discount after that. It'll just be regular ordering. So if you miss that first hour, that's it. Okay. Um, Katrina has to manage a lot of orders when this is happening, and and we have to manage it so that it's fair for everybody. And we want to be able to offer a study that. Um, just because you're not a patron of the community doesn't mean that you can't not still participate. There, I know there are people out there that are part of our community on Ravelry here on YouTube that comment and leave comments on the blog in the Ravelry group that aren't necessarily part of the Patreon community and that's okay and you are welcome here and I don't want you to feel like you can't not participate just because you don't have the word or the code. Um, you are absolutely still welcome to participate and at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, everybody is invited to participate, okay? So there will be three, yeah, the dollars and everything is posted. Um, in the Slack channel, Rebecca. Um, it is all there. Um, so the other piece of this is that that ordering link will not be active. You will not be able to access it until 9 a.m. So when you go, when you click on that link right now, it just says that it's broken. It's not broken. It's not active yet. Okay. That's the other question that Katrina usually gets. I just saved the email, so no need to memorize. Uh, that's exactly, you just memorize the word. <laughs> So in terms of sets, let me go to um, the, hang on, let me go to the photos. There are three braids. There is the white braid, the oatmeal braid, and the uh, muret braid. There are two sets. There is a full set of all three braids, and then there's the half sets with half the braids. So it will be the three, so there's only the two choices. Both choices, you get all three colorways. One, you get the full 
braids, four ounce braids, and the other one you get half uh, uh, two ounce braids. So there's the, the set of three, one will be um, three four ounce braids and the other one will be three two ounce braids, okay? Um, yeah, I think the smaller sets, uh, we, we started doing that when we, um, I think when we did the fin study and I felt like, uh, Katrina felt this way too. Not everybody wants to spin three, four ounce braids and not everybody can do that much spinning in a six month period. Um, so it's a nice way to sort of be able to, um, offer a study without sort of having to, um, it spins such a huge amount of fiber, right? So I, I think it, it, it really works well if you can have a smaller, a smaller amount. Uh, prices are listed. They're not listed in the, um, they're not listed in the, in the blog post, but they are on Slack. And actually if somebody wants to go on Slack and go back to where Katrina posted that, she, she tagged everyone. She did an at everyone. Um, Maybe she wrote it in the comments, the pricing. I know that she has posted pricing. So, um, and I don't want to misquote the pricing because I don't want to mess it up, either too high or too low. I have a couple of numbers in my head of what I think that it is, but I don't want to mess it up and say that it's this amount. And then you go there and you're like, but that's not what, that's not what she said. So, um, if somebody finds that on uh, Patreon, can you just, or sorry, on Slack, can you just tag me? Um, because I can't find it right this second. So, all right, let me, I'm a rookie on Slack. So if somebody can locate, can locate it. Uh, yes, Diana, absolutely. Um, stop making me drool on my, <laughs> on my phone screen. So let's talk about what I am doing with my study. Cause I actually started spinning mine. I have been spinning it on my, oh, I just interrupted it, right when you could see all three braids. So the middle one there is the oatmeal, and then there's the white one and the moorit one. So, and then these are them twisted together, kind of like what Marianne does for Three Waters Farm. I wanted to see how they would work together if you twisted them together. So I want to see how the colors uh, worked up differently. So I actually started spinning mine on the Lendrum. So I threw mine on the Lendrum Saxony. Um, I am spinning, I actually switched over to double drive. So after I had it running in scotch for a little bit, I was like, oh, I don't really like this. So I, I flipped it over to double drive. Um, and what I'm doing is my goal is actually to spin for a three ply, 12 wraps per inch. So those are my singles. I'm spinning 24 wraps per inch for my singles. This is my plyback test. You can see that I kept my plyback test really, really gentle. Um, it has, it's lofty and light and airy. I didn't want it to be firm at all. I wanted lots and lots of air in there. Lots of, uh, check out this elasticity. Isn't that lovely? It's got a really nice, a really nice stretch. And, um, uh, the singles are, um, 24 wraps per inch. One of the things that I'm finding with this, uh, with the Murit, and I just started working on the white because I was spinning from the entire top. So it's not stripped down at all because I'm doing a three ply fractal. I left the more as the, as the single that would be spun end to end. So I had all this fiber in my hand and I'm just not used to spinning that way anymore. After all the silk spinning, like I just don't do that anymore where I have all of that fiber in my hand. So I found that as you can see, as I'm spinning, I had to keep kind of working my way across the top. So I kept kind of twisting it so that um, I could continue to spin consistently. And I was trying to do about three to four drafts back and then onto the wheel. And I'm doing a full draft here. So it's a full sort of um, inch and a half. The staple on this fiber is about three inches. There's some shorter bits. And there are some longer bits, but when you sort of work your way through it, the average is about two, two to two and a half inches. So I found that for drafting backward, I was drafting about an inch and a half to two inches each time to keep it really nice and consistent. Um, 
so that worked on really well out really well oh alex that's wonderful she's planning on dyeing some fiber for this do we need to include similar colors to participate so the colors that we're we're studying this time round are sort of the peach oranges and the navy blues so we're looking at um complements and we're also looking at natural shades so the idea is to sort of we're the color and the breed are two separate studies we just as a community decided at the beginning back in 2016 that we would combine the two studies together and do them at the same time because otherwise it's just too many separate studies and too many different things going on so that's kind of the history so we decided that we would look at this time around Katrina wanted to look at navy blue and sort of those dark indigo blues the kind of moody blues black there's black in there next to that blue um, and then how that would work against the peaches and the oranges but then also throwing you guys a curveball not only do you have to work with black this time around you also have to work with the naturally colored fleece underneath and looking at how the colors died up very differently on say the gray compared to the white top compared to the murret so you ended up what started out as eight as six different colors so there are six colors per braid that she dyed you've ended up with 18 different colors to work with and to manage so that's um sort of the idea i hope that's helpful what other questions do you guys have for me um Oh, I'm glad you guys are excited about the study. That's just wonderful. I know 75 for the full set, but I can't remember the half set price. I feel like it's 38, but I can't remember. And I don't want to misquote pricing. Um, Julie, look on Patreon. Oh, what was, I have no idea what Slack is. So Julie, if you are at a certain level um, on the Patreon for pledging, um, you have to look at the pledge tiers. Slack is the spinning circle tier. Um, and if you are part of that, then you would have received an, an invite from me via your email address to join. So you can have a look at that. Oh, Kelly, thank you. It's $38. Thank you. So half sets are 38 Canadian, full sets are 75 Canadian. Thank you so much, you guys. That's really helpful. The apron you are wearing seems handy. Super excited for this study. Thanks, Sarah. So the apron is actually made by Katrina's mom, Judy, um, and they are available as a custom order. You just have to contact Katrina directly. There was another post um, with the prices, um, Diana. I just am not sure where it is because I, I don't want to spend the time looking. But somebody else, you guys found the prices, so that's super helpful. So full braid sets are $75, half braid sets are $38. This is all Canadian. Thanks, you guys. So my colors, says Debbie. That's awesome. Yeah. So that my apron, the cool thing about my apron, it's actually right here if you guys are happy to wait. So... It's a really neat idea. So basically it looks like this. Judy designed these herself. So it's cut out like that. The arms at the top here actually go under your bum. So when you're spinning, um, you're sitting on that. And then what I do is I take these little tabs. Um, you can put a little belt through it if you want. But what I do is I tie it to my belt loops. And then I tie it on the other side. Because when you get up from your spinning, I tied this side a bit too tight, but that's okay. When you get up from spinning, it's, it doesn't fall off of you. And you can fill your pockets with your fiber, and then it's not rolling around on the ground. So I use this a lot for... Um, spinning stuff like this where I've got a, a length of fiber that I don't necessarily want to load onto a distaff um, but I need to sort of keep it off the floor so yeah very cool uh, Judy makes them Katrina's mom and uh, they're custom they're custom thing so let me just throw that over there for just a moment so does anybody have any other questions about reading color because then we can uh, I can show you the warp that I wound last night um, how tall am I I'm just five five so works works well so i'm just going to talk about this final project really quickly because um I'm, I'm looking at the time and i've kept you guys for so long this morning and i so appreciate that um so i wound this last night 
And uh, yeah, you know what? It's funny, Kelly, because mine used to as well. And I, um, I just got to the point where I just, I, I, I just drove me crazy. Um, and I stopped um, doing that. So I just had to figure out a way to manage my fiber. I wound this little warp last night. It's uh, 120, 26 or 128 ends, just really, really small. Um, it's going to be put onto my jack loom at 12 ends per inch. And uh, I had done a whole bunch of uh, sampling of all of my different uh, silk yarn. So this is Red Eerie, Red Red Eerie. This was my Yak Silk. Um, this one was uh, Tessa, Tessa Brick actually. Um, this one was, or maybe this one was Muga actually. Nope, this one was Tessa. This one's Muga. Just on the pin loom, on my Zoom loom. And this one was my Tassar Peduncle. And you can see just that gorgeous bias. Oh, lovely. These just have an incredible drape. Uh, and they, they turned out really well. Obviously, uh, other than the Red Eerie where I held the yarn double, just to see what it would look like and just to see how it would how it would weave up, um, I kind of got smart by that, by that last sample. The other ones with it held just single um, is a little bit too open and a little bit too... Um, uh, uh, like the structure of the weave wasn't quite right. But when I wove in the ends on the Tessa one, I realized, hey, if I hold them double, maybe it'll give me a nicer a nicer fabric. So that's where this one came from. Um, so knowing that and having sort of that information, I decided to take the radiate, radiant, radiant tea towel pattern that I've got going on my compact upstairs. And... Um, take that pattern, but apply it to a different, um, set. Um, so set is kind of like gauge in knitting, but it's in weaving. So I, I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with 12 ends per inch. I'm going to see sort of what the fabric looks like in those first couple of, uh, rows of weaving. And then if I need to move it out to 14, sorry, move it into 14 ends per inch or move it out to 10 ends per inch, I will do that. But I started with sort of a set of, um, 120. And these are all of the silk yarns that I spun for the silk study for July, January and February, July and August. Um, I guess I'm wishing that it's summer already. So these are all of the silk yarns that I spun for that, for, for all of that content that I've created for you guys, for the spinning pearls, the how I spin, the thoughtful spinner. These are all of the yarns. So um, this is a little bit that it had a knot in it from the silk, the Tussa Brick. So I'm going to use this for hem stitching once I figure out the uh, set. Um, and so what I'm going to do for, so the, the, the warp is based on the radiate, radiate or radiant towels um, that are available on the Sweet Georgia website. They're basically a gradient that moves their way in to the center. So I use this as my outer. These are the two next ones. And then it goes to, goes like this. Um, that's basically how, how the colors move. So they go into the white mulberry and then back out to the cashmere silk nylon. Uh, no, sorry, cashmere, merino cashmere silk. Uh, yarn. So I just used a very little bit of this. You can see I used a lot of the yak silk in the in the warp because this was um, 18 grams that I still had um, left to use up, and now I'm down to like seven or eight grams. I weighed them all uh, to see what what how much I used. I didn't worry about yardage particularly, and then I'm gonna just weave and see what I end up with. I just did a little baby three yard warp. I'll throw that on later today and see where we're at. So I think it'll be really fun. The, I know the drape, right? Um, now I'm spinning something other than e-spinning that would... Um, oh, awesome, Lee. Okay, cool. Um, let me see. Back to breed and color. The dyeing on the natural colors automatically makes tint, tone, and shade, right? Exactly, Diane. You nailed it. Asking in case I try dyeing some as well. Absolutely. Um, let me just catch up with chat. I'm going to lean into it and have them be the most split for a three ply fractal. Um, that's how she, I never actually said what I was spinning when I was showing you guys what I had had sort of started for the Shetland. The first yarn that I'm making is a three ply fractal. So the Murit was spun end to end for the first single and I didn't split it at all. And then the oatmeal, um, I split twice. So that will be my, my, my third bobbin. And then the second bobbin 
is uh, the white that I split th uh, four times. So the first little bundle is on the wheel right now. These are the remaining three. <clears throat> and that will be for a three ply fractal to start off with. So um, for weft, I'm gonna work with these yarns here. So I didn't use any of the yellow mulberry um, for in the warp. Um, so I'll weave a little bit of the yellow mulberry and then I'm gonna use up these yarns here. So they'll be all very light um, and I'm gonna leave these ones out. So the, the weft will be um, a combination of all of these ones, probably color blocked um, a certain length. Yeah, so probably actually a gradient now that I'm looking at it. It'll probably start off with this, go to the Muga, to the Tassa, to the other Tassa, and then um, to the white mulberry. And it'll just kind of work its way up the shawl. Um, it's a three yard warp. So if um, one, two, three, four, five, I've got five yarns um, divided out over about 85 inches of knitting. So we'll see, we'll see. Community participation. All right, Tracy, Breed and Color Study. This was the Charolais study. Um, so she finished her fingerless mitts and we had talked about this so much um, in uh, Queries and Explorations that when I saw her post this, I was just so excited for her that they were done. So uh, Tracy said she wanted to pop back in and show her completed mitts from the Breed and Color Study and it was our Charolais study. So this was the study that we did through the fall. Um, I really struggled with this because the colors were just not for me. In Queries and Explorations recently, we talked about the part of the challenge related to color and that gave me renewed interest. I pivoted from my original pattern so I could finish these sooner, making them pulse warmers instead of full mitts. My next project will be to make a second pair, exploring these colors in combination with cool and warm colors to see what happens. I really appreciate the new perspective of participating in these studies, not just to learn about the breed, but to really explore color as well. It really opens up new freedoms. We had talked quite extensively and I've included it in the one of the Wool and Spinning Radio episodes towards the end. We had had a huge conversation um, about the fact that Breed and Color Study is a study. It is not to enhance our stash. And that might sound harsh, I don't mean it to, um, but it is an opportunity to learn and that um, for many of us, our breeding color study fiber should actually come from our workshop budgets, not from our stash enhancement budgets. And we had this whole conversation on Wool and Spinning Radio about that. Um, and that episode actually, uh, you can find, it was not the first episode in January, um, I think it was the second, the second episode in January. Let me just link it in the live chat. So we had the Shetland reveal. And then at the beginning of the month on Wool and Spinning Radio, we had um, conclusions of the 51 yarns. I think it was the last episode of 2020 actually on Wool and Spinning Radio. And I had included at the end, um, yes, here it is. Wool and Spinning Radio, Episode 64, Breeding Color Study Conclusion on Charolais. If you listen to the end of that episode, um, you will hear the conversation that we had in Queries and Explorations about breed and color and uh, thinking about it and framing it differently. So have a listen to that if you're a patron of the show. Wool and Spinning Radio is our audio podcast and it is for all patrons of the community. So even if you're pledging a dollar a month, you have access to Wool and Spinning Radio. And I, I just really appreciate um, your uh, continued support of that of that work. So beautiful, Tracy. Everybody is is uh, just in love with your mitts. Um, yeah, well done. Beautiful, beautiful job, Tracy. Very pretty, awesome. These mitts are beautiful. They're amazing, stunning. I love these. You guys are so amazing. So the next thing is actually from Jackie. So she has spun 100% Merino de Arles, and uh, she, I just loved her comment because this is for a sweater spin. This is part of her natural shades along, and I suspect also kind of zero to hero. Uh, she said, if you think Targi is bouncy, this might have it beat, and look at the round springiness of that yarn. Um, four, four ounces on that one skein, 116 grams. Um, 337 yards. Beautiful. Her spin, your spinning Jackie is just amazing. So even. And look at that, that roundness of that yarn. I'm not sure if it's a three ply or a two ply. 
it's 1250 yards of DK weight yarn, so roughly 12 wraps per inch. And uh, just look at the roundness of it. Gorgeous color, gorgeous color. Oh, good to see you, Zan. Thank you for, for being here. We're kind of running long today, so uh, thank you for, for your time here, you guys. This one was from Megan. She finished her natural shades along, um, and she's actually in the chat today. Oh, Jackie says it's a two-ply. Um, here's her natural shades along. This is based on the range shawl by Andrea Maori, uh, with a lot of ad lib on her part. She went stash diving for this one and pulled out all sorts of odds and ends of hand spun. The great thing about natural shades is they all look good together. So you really don't need to worry about the colors. That is so true. I held all the yarns double. So it is big and thick and heavy and woolly. This shawl has white alpaca, tan Shetland, dark brown CVM, dark gray Heberdian, light gray and light gray north ronald's day ronald z uh white shetland and murat shetland i intended this to be a heavy warm shawl to put around my neck while walking to work in the winter however it has been so warm and heavy and lovely as a lap blanket that I haven't wanted to take it off. The edges are still wobbly because I love it so much that I haven't wanted to take it off to block it so she may not block it until spring. I totally get that. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, that's so funny, Jackie. She said um, it's a two-ply, but she, which she never does. So you really got a great yarn from that two-ply. Just beautiful. It's so round and bouncy. Just gorgeous. Really nice plying, uh, Jackie. And it had that really gorgeous twist angle, so it'll really, um, it'll really come out nicely. Um, this was from Greta. I just love this. I have added this sweater to my queue now. So this is Greta, the warmest row. Um, this was actually off of Slack. Um, is Zero to Hero still going on? Absolutely. It goes on all, all year, every year here at Woolen Spinning. I'm still trucking away on my Fleurice cardigan by Nori, sorry, by Sorry Norland. I actually want to make this now. This is in my queue. I just love this sweater. This is out of Cotswold. So this actually qualifies for natural shades along, zero to hero along, sweater spin, all the things. Uh, I finished one lace side of the bodice and get a break by doing stockinette on the back rows for a while. It's been a great pattern. Looks like it's going to need a really good blocking to get it orderly. <laughs> to get it orderly. I love that. <laughs> Thank you, Greta, for sharing. It's just beautiful. Beautiful. Now I want to make one. Uh, Rebecca is doing another, this is another zero to hero. So she finished a zero to hero spin already. She decided to spin this really old stash after quote, the speediest yarn style from 51 yarns. So she wanted to see how much yarn and how quickly she could spin it for a zero to hero, which I think is awesome. It's about one and a half pounds in total, just over a thousand yards of worsted weight, which is perfect for a sweater for, for Rebecca. Um, it should be enough for basic cardigan. I'm thinking after the style of the comfort fade cardi, though she might use a different pattern since her gauge will be totally different. I just love these yarns. That yellow down there, right, right down there. Oh, I just love that. Love it. And that brown with that little bit of next to the red too. Like you've got that brown in there um, to kind of ground it all. But then next to the red and the yellow, like it all is just so cohesive. Um, these three colors, they just look like they were meant to go together. Love it. Yeah. Love that shawl. Love that gray. Beautiful. That Coltswold is gorgeous. That's awesome, Greta. There's just nothing like some of those long, long wools, hey? Like there's just nothing like them. Yeah. Funny since the yellow is what I struggle with most. It's so bright. Yeah, but it works. And it's only one skein, right? Like it's just, oh, just, it's going to bring so much life, you know, because you've got the dark, um, of the brown that's going to tone everything down and allow it to mute and just sort of give the eye somewhere to go. But the yellow is going to draw the eye and give it somewhere, um, some, somewhere to focus on. It's, it's just going to be, it, it looks cohesive. Um, yeah, very furnace. Like those colors look, do look nice together. Love those colors. Amazing. That's a ton of yarn. Finally, we have from Kim. Thank you so much for posting all of your photos, you guys, and for sharing all of your projects. I know myself, 
Um, it's I find it very inspiring. Kim shares in the Tin Can Knits Along. We're going to finish this up at the end of the month. Um, so the Tin Can Knits Along was sort of through the Christmas break and through the Christmas holidays as people are finishing up projects and whatnot. And I think what we'll do is we'll roll tin, the Tin Can Knits Along into the Zero to Hero um, because a lot of these sweaters are uh, big undertakings for people or they're um, bigger projects, um, you know, color work or they're spinning multiple yarns or they're stash diving. Um, so we're going to sort of uh, roll it into... Um, some of these other alongs that we're doing because this one would have um, worked really well for um, any of what I just mentioned actually uh, zero to hero natural shades uh, hashtag sweater spin on slack it all it all any of those umbrellas so we've got a lot of umbrellas right now so let's let's kind of clear out clean out some of them um, so Kim shares I ended up going with two different button bands and I actually really like the two by two rib better however the seed stip, stitch band was picked up exactly the same and she really should have picked up less stitches for it as it's a bit ruffled but crappy button band and nice ribbed band with buttons oh well I now know how to pick up and knit button bands on a steaked cardigan I'm just beside myself with happiness all hand spun from locally sourced wool low quality gulf coast fleeces to be exact it turned out way better than I managed imagined and it is so warm it's really cold out today and the wind is blowing out uh and the wind is blowing but the cardigan kept me warm during the photo shoot my poor photographer my 14 year old son was freezing but he got good pics and it was so worth it gorgeous Kim and you've got a great son for being out there in this in the wind to photograph your amazing cardigan steaked gorgeous colors I'm assuming you dyed it yourself uh, it just looks amazing amazing Thank you, you guys for sharing and for continuing to share your work. It means a lot. And uh, because this community is so active and so busy, if you guys um, have finished something or you want to share something and, and you wonder if I've seen it, just tag me. Um, I don't mind at all. So thank you so much, you guys, for being here. Everyone's work is so inspiring. I can't seem to organize myself lately. So this is extra helpful to see everyone's work. I totally agree, Maggie. I was saying to Eve yesterday, I feel like... Um, there's this like um, kind of tension right now for me where I'm not getting anything done. I've kind of started a whole bunch of stuff, but there's like no progress being made on anything. Like nothing's kind of like happening. <laughs> I don't know what to do about it. It's just kind of the way it is right now, but it's a little bit frustrating. Like my little love cardigan, I just can't like get any like distance done on it. Does that make sense? Like I just can't like get to the next stage. I've worked on it. It just doesn't progress. There's like no progression. So I need to, um, I probably just need some more knitting time, which, you know, some seasons of life, there's tons and other seasons there isn't tons. So it is life. It is life. Um, thank you so much, you guys, for uh, sharing. Um, welcome, Jenny. I was talking about the Romney earlier in the show, and I um, had mentioned you in our conversation. So um, definitely go back and have a listen to that when you have a few minutes. And, um, oh, Eve already told you. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. I will talk to you next Saturday morning, um, same time, same place, 8.30 Pacific Standard Time. For those who are not patrons of the community, uh, please know that the Breed and Color Study Shetland Fiber will go live for everyone at 10 a.m. on Monday morning. So this show, rather than not having it released publicly on Tuesday at 4 p.m., the show is actually going to go live for everyone this week now. Um, that's usually, that's not how the show normally is week in, week out, but I know you guys really understand because when we're launching Breed and Color Study, I want to make sure that everybody sees it and has access. So at 10 a.m. on, on uh, Monday morning, uh, Breed and Color Study on craftyjacks.ca, J-A-K-S dot C-A will go live for everybody, for patrons of the community and subscribers to Katrina's newsletter. Uh, there is a, a word that you need to access the site at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Monday morning for that first hour of ordering and the discount will automatically be applied, okay? Um, have a wonderful, wonderful week. Um, such a slacker. Yeah, it's so true, Charlotte. Do you sleep? You know what the funny thing is? I sleep a lot. <laughs> like if you, there's the, there's these pie charts about like how your days, um, should be divided up. And, uh, I think it's like 42% of the day, um, should be sleep and like exercise, self-care, 
you know, enjoying your food, like sitting down to have a meal, um, doing something for yourself, blah, blah, blah. And like for me, that 42%, like the majority of it is sleep. <laughs> I sleep a lot. Um, so if you have any questions about Braiding Color Study, do not hesitate to reach out to me or to Katrina. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. And um, I will, Q&A is not until February. We've had our two sessions, Q&E, &E, uh, is not until uh, the first week of February. So we've got a couple of weeks um, break. And I will see you guys next week. Have a wonderful week. I keep saying that, but I really mean it this time. I'm going to go. So happy spinning, happy knitting, happy dreaming, happy all the things. Keep sharing your projects with us. We love seeing them. And until next time, um, just stay safe, wear your masks, stay calm, all the things. If you have the opportunity to be vaccinated, I hope that you do. And I will talk to you next time. Bye, guys.